Hey everybody, I hope you're having a fantastic day. We are going to do some case testing for Raspberry Pi Model 4Bs. Now, these things are definitely faster than these things. This is a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, um, but these strongly recommend that you use some form of active cooling on them, some kind of fan. And so that complicates things a little bit. It makes the thing louder. It's more expensive. Uh, you have to use a more expensive power adapter. You need to use adapters or special cables for the HDMI. So using the Pi 4B is just a little bit more complicated than your typical Raspberry Pi 3, 3B, 3B Plus kind of deal. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to look at some cases and check not only how they do with allowing the thing to be cool, but even more importantly, the noise. And so if you remember when I tested this uh, Raspad 3, you'll know that one of my biggest gripes and one of most reviewers' biggest gripes was the noise. And I do believe they did some things later on, and we're going to simulate what they did. But, um, you know, using something like this and having it make noise is a lot different than having the other three or four pies around my office to make no noise. So what we're going to do is we're going to test the cooling and the volume that these things are putting out. And so I'm going to test them all with the same four gigabyte um, Model 4B. I'm going to put the heat sink on it once and we're going to use the same heat sink through all the tests. And we have four contenders here. Well, actually, I guess five. So one is we're going to run it with no heat sink, just bare metal and do some tests and then we have this Vilros this is a uh, a metal case and Vilros and Canakit are my two favorite places to get Raspberry Pi kits but this is a um, metal kit with a fan built in so we're going to test that one we are going to test this Nest Pi 4 that I picked up at Micro Center it says $12.99 I believe I paid $9.99 for it um, so I paid a fair amount for it but uh, this case is a roomy case, but it is made out of plastic. And uh, let's see, is that open? It looks like it wants to open. Uh, let me slide out and open. We'll see. I don't want to break it. But this is the uh, Nespi case, and it looks like a Nintendo Entertainment System. And then this is the Kanakit case, which is made of plastic and does not contain a fan, although there may be one in here. This is from the Kanakit uh, Pi 4 Starter Premium version here. So let's see if they did include a fan. Oh, yep, there's a little fan there, so we're going to throw the Kanakit fan in there. Notice that is a branded Kanakit fan. And we'll go ahead and use these heat sinks. So we're going to use these across the board. And last but not least, we have the Raspad. And so we're going to test all these. We're going to see how loud they are. We're going to see how they throttle and, and what kind of temperatures they're putting out. And then, as I mentioned earlier, we are going to test for sound levels. Now, Banggood was kind enough to send me this sound level meter. And uh, I had a, something taped to it, and it kind of messed up the box a little bit. So we're going to take a look at this thing, and we're going to use this to tell us how loud these cases are and uh, I can tell you that this one I actually had it running for something 24 7 and I just couldn't stand the noise even though it was all the way across the room so uh, we have this meter here which is the Wintact WT85 sound level meter I have not played with it yet but I'm going to put the thing together and we're going to use it in the test and I'll kind of let you know what I think about this as well so let's get the testing started so I've gone ahead and attached the heat sinks to the board. Now you'll notice that it attaches one to the CPU, one to the RAM, and one to the USB controller. Uh, because this one is rectangular, you obviously have to put it up and down, which means that if you put the other two in any other orientation, you're a freaking savage and you can unsubscribe to my channel for all I care. And that is when we run into our first problem. We see that uh, these little things here are made to be heat pipes. Uh, apparently they don't look like very quality heat pipes, but they're made to be heat pipes, which means that they are expecting to touch the chip. So, uh, this one right here is in the way. Now I have two choices. I could either try to remove the heat sink or I could remove the heat pipe. I'm going to actually remove the pipe, uh, just because we're going to keep this board consistent. I know it'll be a little bit of a difference in the cooling, uh, between what this thing would do and this thing would do, but I think it's close enough that we're going to be okay. 
I was gonna get out the Dremel, but instead I just decided to take a pair of Lyman's pliers and just snap the thing right off. No harm, no foul. We can put the case back together. So there you have it. We are going to insert the SD card and I'll explain what I'm gonna do for the test. So I'm using a slightly modified version of the Explaining Computers benchmark where they run Sysbench and uh, record the time and temperature and things like that. Um, my version that I tested on the one without a case at all didn't throttle. I expected this thing to hit 90-ish C and throttle, but it didn't. So uh, because of that, I'm not really expecting it to throttle with the metal case. It may with the plastic cases, but I'm going to run the same test on all of these pies and I'm going to record the amount of time it takes to run the test, which will give us an idea if it's throttling and the temperatures that it puts out. So I'll be right back. So for the sound measurements, as I said earlier, Banggood sent me this Wintact WT85 sound level meter, and I specifically asked for it because I wanted to do this test. Uh, the thing's about as easy as it can get. It comes with the batteries. You put them in there, turn it on, and at this point, it is giving you a live uh, volume reading, and you can also choose to have minimum or maximum. I could specifically see the maximum being really handy. If you're doing things like automotive testing and you want to put the thing in the car and see how loud it gets, just the maximum volume and stuff like that. You can also, if you're reaching in some kind of awkward area, you could reach in and hit the hold button and it'll hold it for you. Thing also has a backlight, uh, really could not be simpler to use. So for my testing, I turned off all the computers in the office, turned off my main computer, the laser computer, the servers, turned the air conditioner off. And uh, I tried a couple different ways and I felt like the most accurate was to get down here about as close as I could to the device without touching it and uh, and let it kind of even out and then took your average reading there. Uh, I will say beyond just sound level, the actual sound it makes is also important. Okay, and now it's time to rank these things. In fifth place, we have the Raspad 3, which was actually third place in cooling with a max temperature of 55 degrees Celsius, but that 62 decibels of noise was a deal breaker for me. Now, that doesn't mean that I hate this thing. In fact, what I think I'm gonna do is just run it without a fan. I've tried the various fixes that are available online. They didn't make any kind of real difference. So uh, I think either running it without a fan or um, just basically using the front of it is kind of the way to go um, because in its existing form factor, I won't say it's unusable, but for me, it's just way too annoying to be usable. So in fifth place, we have the Raspad. In fourth place, another painful one to say is Kanakit. Uh, now I love Kanakit as an overall package. They have uh, great kits that come with good SD cards, good documentation, all that kind of stuff. But as the case itself goes, uh, this one is in fourth place. It is uh, in fourth place for cooling with a max temperature of 59.9 degrees Celsius. And it is in third place with noise. And I think part of that comes from the fact that this thing um, has little clips that hold the fan in. And so instead of screwing it in and getting a nice tight bind, a uh, nice tight bond, you get a little bit of rattling that you don't necessarily need to have there because it's just held in with clips. Also, these wires are by far the thinnest wires of anything connecting a fan and they, they themselves even kind of rattle. Uh, so as much as I love the Kanakit kits, I'm not a giant fan of the Kanakit case. In third place, we have no case at all. Um, in my opinion, I ran my tests without these heat sinks on there, but in my opinion, 99% of the time when I use a Raspberry Pi, I don't bother putting it in a case at all. And so doing that, this thing ran a scorching hot fifth place at 69.6 .6 degrees max temperature, but it was first place in noise, obviously. Without a fan, uh, then you're not going to have noise problems. And in my situation with the type of server loads that I put on these things, uh, that is not a problem at all because I don't tax them enough to make that even matter. But that being said, if I am going to run it without a case and not put a very heavy load on it, there's really not a whole lot of reason to not just go ahead and buy a Pi 3B or Pi 3B Plus. Uh, you get most of the performance in the actual actual uh, torture test, this thing ran about 30% slower, but the fact that you can use standard chargers, have standard HDMI, and um, 
you know, not worry about a case or a fan, then, you know, it's not a bad way to go. But in officially, in third place, we have the Raspberry Pi 4B with no case and no heat sinks. In second place, we have the Nest Pi 4, the Nest 4 Pi. And uh, I think this case is just a cool case in looks. Uh, one of the big things it has going for it is the fact that it's tall. And so because of its height, they were able to stand the fan up and get kind of a cross airflow, which gave overall pretty good cooling performance. It was uh, second place in the cooling with a high temperature of 51.6, which is a good bit lower than the other options. It was fourth place in noise with 59.3. So it is one of the noisier cases, but overall, I like the form factor. I think it's cool looking. Uh, it was loud, but nothing compared to the rasp pad. And so I didn't consider it to be prohibitively loud. So in uh, second place, we have the Ness 4 Pi. And that means that in first place, we have the Vilros. And as a New Jersey guy, uh, Vilros is based in New Jersey. I'm proud to have these guys as be the number one case. They are uh, max temperature. They were the coolest at 50.6, even with me breaking off that heat pipe. And uh, in noise, they were second place, just barely behind the one with no fan at all at a uh, max decibels of 50. 1.0 so uh overall the fact that this case is made out of metal makes a big difference and so even if you don't choose the vilros uh i would highly recommend a metal case if you're going to run a fan uh just going to do a little bit better heat dissipation things like that um i think you're pretty much neck and neck if you buy just a standard raspberry pi kit from vilros or Canakit. i don't think that this case is enough to say that one kit is way better than the other but if you are just buying a case or if the case is an important part of your buying decision then i would strongly recommend you consider the vilros one and um i do want to thank banggood for sending me this thing it gave me uh definitive answers that there it can kind of play tricks on you like i said there's there's a bit of a difference between the loudness of the noise and the type of noise uh and so this gave me good information easy to use um you know seems like it'll be fairly durable i feel like the price was relatively cheap i'll have the description uh, the link for this in the description with the price and all that kind of stuff if you use my links for any of this stuff it definitely helps the channel so uh hey thanks for watching i hope you learned something i hope you had a good time have a great day